Hey folks, today we're going to take a look at combining a reactive spring backend with a reactive TypeScript frontend to build a chat application. For that, we're going to use the Hilla framework, which gives us a spring boot backend configured with a lit frontend, a bunch of components and TypeScript uh, communication between the two. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to use the bot and CLI to init a new project. I'm using the Hilla and the empty parameters here to create a new empty project. And once this runs, we're going to open it up in an IDE. So I'm going to CD into the created project. I'm going to use VS code to open it. And let's take a look at what we have here. So if we look at what we have here in our project, we have a source main Java folder here with a Spring Boot application. And this is what's going to launch and run the application itself. Now, what's different from a plain Spring Boot application is that there's this front end folder as well, where we have our views. And in this case, we just have this single empty view. The way that we run this application is if we open up our uh, console here, we're going to run the Maven wrapper that's included. And what that's going to do is it's going to, first of all, download all the Maven dependencies. And then after that, it's going to download all the front end dependencies, build everything and have our application up and running in just a moment. Now, the nice thing about this is that we don't need to run two different builds, one for the back end and one for the front end. And regardless, if we change front end stuff or back end stuff, we're just going to see the results immediately reflected in our browser. All right, so uh, we have this uh, view here, which just displays a placeholder. Uh, the view itself extends from view, which is essentially a lit element that includes support for MobX. Now we're not going to go into MobX in this video. We're going to focus on just the plain basics. So we're just going to use plain lit element for building this view. Now I mentioned that Hilla comes with a bunch of components and we're going to use them for, for building out this reactive chat application. So if we go to the documentation and click on over to the components, you'll see it shares the same components with the Vaughn framework. And if we scroll down here a little bit, we'll see that we have these message input and message list components. And those are the ones that I'm going to use. So if we look at the code here, we'll see they're pretty straightforward to use. So we have a message list tag and a message input tag. And if we look at this a little bit closer, we see that it takes in this array of items that have text, time, username, and some additional optional properties. So let's go ahead and go into our view here and first of all, import everything that we need. I'm going to import these components. So bot and messages that'll pull in both of them. And then in addition to that, I'll want to use the bot and text field just to capture the username of whoever is chatting. So use the bot and text field here like this. Now, if we look at the actual component here, uh, if you're not familiar with lit, uh, it's very similar to React in that it's a reactive component model where you have a state and a render function that gets re-rendered anytime that state changes. In our case, we don't have a state yet, but we'll get to that soon. Uh, then we have this connected callback that gets called whenever this gets added to the DOM. In this case, we're just adding some CSS classes to it. In this case, we can remove the centering because we're not going to use that. And then we're going to remove everything in the current render method here. And instead, what I'll do is I'll add, first of all, that message list. So I'll go in message list. Then on the bottom, I want to have both this message input and a text field for the username. So for that, I'm going to create a div. And this div will have a couple of uh, classes on it. So Hilla uses these uh, helper classes that, that are included, these utility classes. and through those, I can configure some basic layouting pretty straightforward. So I'm going to have a flex box. I'll have a small padding on it. I'll have a small gap between the items. And then I'll have the items uh, aligned to the baseline like this. That should have an E there. All right, so everything I put in here will be kind of in a flex box. I'll have a small gap, small padding, and aligned to the baseline. So I'll add the on a text field field like that. And then we'll have the 
brought in message input component like this. So we'll save this and we'll see what we have. Now, right now, everything isn't really looking the way that we want. What I would like to have happen here is that the message input and name input are all the way at the bottom of our screen. And then we have this big area here for the messages. Likewise, I want the message to be kind of the one taking up all the space that we have here. So we can do that by just assigning some kind of flex uh, grows here. So for the message list, I'll say that the class CSS class here should be equal to flex grow. And that should push, push down the input div here. And likewise here, I'm going to tell that the message input is the component that should be grow, growing. So I'll add a class here of flex grow like this. All right, that looks good. Uh, on the message uh, or the input field here, I can add, add a placeholder just so people know what to put in there. And we can have this be name like this. So people know that a name is expected here and a message is expected here. All right, so now we have the kind of UI components in place, but in order for this to actually be a meaningful chat application, we need to have a backend that we can connect to and kind of use to broker messages between the different clients. So for that, let's go into the backend folder of the application here, which is here under source main Java. And right now we just have the application class here, but I'm gonna create a new file here called a chat endpoint. And a chat endpoint is just a Java class that's annotated with an endpoint annotation, which will mean that Hilla will make any public methods here available to the client as TypeScript methods. Then I'm also going to make this an anonymous allowed endpoint, meaning that we're not going to deal with uh, authentication right now in this demo. All right. So, uh, what we're going to do here, first of all, I'm going to define just a simple Java object that we're going to use as the data type for our messages. And again, if we go into the components here, we look at the uh, message list here, should be able to see that we need to have properties of text, time, and username. So I'm going to go ahead and do a public static class called message. and this message class will have a public string for the text, a public zone date time for the time, and then it will have a public string for the username. Now, I'm going to make the text and the username mandatory. So I'm going to annotate them with a non null annotation, and that way they're going to be marked as kind of not optional, but required when when the TypeScript generator generates a TypeScript uh, counterpart of this class. All right, and now that we have the data type in hand, what we need is really the plumbing that will allow us to send messages between between the different uh, between the different clients. So for that, we're going to use essentially a sync, which will be the source where all the different clients can pu publish messages, and then a flux. Uh, which is a data type that can return values over and over again, which each client can use to connect to. So let's define those in our in our class here as fields. So I'll have a private many of type message and a message like this, which we'll call the chat sync. And we'll obviously need to do the imports and then private flux of message that we'll call the chat. And then we'll do a constructor for the chat uh, endpoint where we actually initialize these. So for the for the sync, we're going to initialize that to uh, with the syncs.many helper here. We're going to create a multicast sync with a best effort uh, direction. So the chat flux will then essentially just be this chat sync as a flux. And we can define some things here, like let's say replay, we'll replay the 10 latest messages if a new person joins, and then we'll do auto connect. So whenever some, the first person connects to this, we'll set up everything here. 
good. All right, so then what we need for the actual kind of API for this endpoint is essentially just two methods, one for joining the chat. So just announcing that, hey, I'm ready to receive new messages when they come in, and one for sending in uh, new messages. So let's start with the easy one here. So public flux of message, and this will be called join, and just returns that chat. So simple as that, we just return this flux uh, data type from our endpoint, and we'll be able to subscribe to it in our in our UI. Now I'm going to also add a non-null annotation here on both the flux and the message because there's an inconsistency in how Java and TypeScript deal with types. And in this case, I know that we're never going to return a null flux, and the flux itself will never return null messages. So that way, we don't need to do any unnecessary null checks in the, in the UI. All right, and then for the actual sending, uh, what we're going to do here, another public method, that's void, and we'll call this send, take in a message. And what it does then is it will set the time of when that message got sent. So message.time is equal to a zone date time dot now. And then we'll pass this into the sync so that it can broadcast it out to everyone. So we'll call it chat sync dot emit next. And this takes in two things. First of all, the message. And then this failure handler. So the failure handler essentially has a signal type type and a emit result that it gets in as parameters. And what we want to check here is that is the emit result equal to uh, emit, emit result dot non serialized. If so, return true. Uh, Otherwise, return false. So, with that little piece, uh, piece of code here, we now have all the plumbing needed to actually get this chat application up and running. So, whenever a new client joins, they'll call this join and start listening to new messages. And whenever they want to send something, they'll send send their message to the send point, and that'll get distributed out to all the browsers. All right. So let's go back into our view here, and all of this up. So I mentioned earlier on that lit uses the same kind of con concept as React of having a state and then this render function that gets run whenever the state changes. So now we're going to go ahead and actually define some state for our component. And we're going to do that with the state decorator. And the first piece of state that we're going to have is this list of messages. And the type of that will be a message array that will initialize to an empty array. And the thing to note here is that we imported message from this front end generated folder. So essentially, this message interface got uh, generated for us based on that Java type that we defined. So it will always stay in sync with whatever the back end sends us. So that way, if we're working in a project where we have different people on the back end and the front end, uh, we're going to be more confident that the back end and the front end will stay in sync whenever we move fast. So, so we have the messages there. And then the other piece of state that we'll have is the username uh, that we have the input for. And that'll just be an empty string to start out. The message list component, if you remember, will take in this array of uh, messages as its items property. And we bind that by using a dot annotation to denote that we're binding to a property and then saying that dot items is equal to this dot messages. So whenever we have new messages, they're, they're going to get shown here. Now to actually see some messages, we need to be able to send them out. So for that, we're going to add a submit event listener here on the input with the at here for denoting a message or a event listener. We're going to call this dot submit whenever that happens. And the submit uh, method here will take in an event, let's say a custom event. And what it will then do is it'll take this chat endpoint, we'll call send, it'll 
create a new message. So the text is going to be equal to the event detail value. And then the username is going to be equal to this dot username. Of course, we need to somehow capture that username. The way we can do that is by adding an event listener here for the change event. And we're going to call this dot username change. Change like that. And then we're going to implement that here. Username change. And it'll take in an event. And this will be a text field change event. And the only thing we need to do is set the username equal to e dot target dot value like that. So whenever the username here changes, we'll set the state here and everything will stay in sync. So now if everything worked, I should be able to put in my name here, Marcus, say hello, press send, and you can see the input got cleared but we don't see anything here yet. And the reason we're not seeing anything is because I forgot to actually subscribe us to that uh, join method. So the way we can do that is here in the connected callback. Uh, whenever the component gets mounted, we can call the chat endpoint join method, and then just say, uh, essentially define what we wanna do on the next message that's coming in. So we'll get a message and then we can decide what we want to do with it. What we want to do with it is call this dot messages and append this message to our array. Now the way the change detection works in lit is that it only looks at the reference of things. So essentially we're working with immutable data structures. So what we'll do here instead of pushing it onto the existing array is we're going to create a new array with this new message. So we'll uh, destructure the current array here like that, and then we'll append that new message to it like that. All right, so now if we try this, type in my name, say hello, that should work. But again, I forgot something. So right now, push support in Hella is still under a feature flag. So what I need to do is go in here and enable push support. And the reason we need to enable push support is that in a regular kind of uh, request response model on the web. So when we're doing uh, XHR requests, essentially there's not an open connection between the server and the client where the server could just send us new messages. So under the hood, what happens when we call this join is Hilla will create a WebSocket for us that will then be used for pushing these messages. All right, so when we add that, we actually need to go in and restart the server. So I'll close the currently running process and just restart Maven. This time around, since we already started it earlier, this is gonna be a very quick, quick start and our app should be up and running momentarily. All right, so let's give this one more try. Uh, what's going on? Marcus, hello. All right, and there we go. Now, obviously a one person chat's not very interesting. So I'll go ahead and open up a new window here and what I can see, first of all, is that the chat history is populated here because we have that uh, replay there. And this will be Bob. Bob will say, hello there. And sure enough, I can see the updated value here as well. Now, I don't really like the whole kind of zone date time to string here. So we could also just go ahead and take care of formatting that. So instead of using the messages just as they are. I'm going to create a getter for formatting them. I'm going to call this formatted messages. And what we'll do here is we'll return this dot message uh, messages dot map, and we're going to map over each message and change the time from being this long long string to just a printed human readable format. So for each message, we're going to return an object. So I'll have a uh, parentheses and return an object here. And we'll first of all, uh, kind of destructure the message itself. So everything, but then we'll override the time, the new date of that time. So essentially passing in this string into the constructor and then saying, uh, get 
local uh, to local time string like this, and then we'll need to pass a locale. I'll just hard code this to enus like that. And now that we have this getter, all we need to do is change the binding here from being uh, bound to the messages uh, to being bound to the formatted messages like that. And now we have a much more human readable format for our messages. All right, so there you have it, a fairly quick way of building a full stack reactive application with Spring Boot and Hilla. I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any ideas for new videos or any comments or questions on this video, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.